Hi, welcome back to Coach's Corner. This week we've got a nice array of topics, including how to go about targeting a big running goal and a big triathlon goal. Also, how quickly your tri training should progress. How to sort out your training gear. And nutrition when training for a sprint distance triathlon. As always, send in your questions using the hashtag GTN Coach's Corner. Whilst you're at it, also, Give this video a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe so catch all the future GTN Coaches Corners. Yeah, well, we're going to delve in with what seems like quite a hot topic at this time of year when people are planning their season of how to balance triathlon and maybe another goal. And this one comes from Glenn Ireland. He says, I'll be training for a half Ironman, then following that up with a marathon right on four weeks later. What should my training look like to transition to the marathon in that amount of time? One week of light recovery followed by the final three weeks of 70.3 plan, or should I try to add more running in? Well, I, I think the big question here is which is the priority and I think we're going to have this a couple of times in, mm -hmm. in the show today um, so yeah is the marathon the priority or is the 70.3 the priority now if we were just training for a marathon we probably actually see some of our largest running weeks or some of the longest runs actually happening in and around the time that you're going to be doing that 70.3 four weeks before mm. the marathon so that kind of throws up a bit of an issue but you will be getting quite good conditioning from training for the 70.3. In addition, you've got the biking, the swimming, which is going to help cardiovascular endurance and the strength from the bike. So you're actually going to be in fairly good shape for the marathon just off 70.3 training, but just maybe losing that overall volume and conditioning for the marathon distance. Yeah, so I guess that way it would be prioritizing the triathlon first and then you'd have to really prioritize your recovery straight after that race so that you can kind of get straight into the last couple of weeks of run training and you want to try to get in a couple of meaty long distance runs without upping it too mm. too quickly. So it's hard to know exactly how much run mileage you've been doing, but it's that fine line of really pushing those long runs. They're probably the most particular ones. You'll have the overall conditioning, but it's practicing that, that sort of nutrition and just getting that time on feet and then making sure you've still got enough time to taper and not trying to push it too late to the line for the marathon because you need to go in rested. But then flip it round and if the marathon is your priority and you've got the 70.3 then you need to look at actually upping that run volume earlier on in your 70.3 training and you might even as a result need to back off a little bit on some of your longer bike rides just to manage that fatigue and um and get through the 70.3 so yeah it's back to the priority question i guess yeah well, on to the next question then from Aero Noir. Uh, said, Hi, I'm trying to plan my year and have two focus events. The first being an attempt for a half marathon PB in April, and then the second being my first half distance triathlon in September. Everything else gets organized around these events. In preparation for the 70.3, I'm actually planning to complete a few shorter races. There is an Olympic distance race the weekend before the 70.3 race that I'm considering because the location is very dear to me. Would that be too close and would it interfere too much with the race day performance or could I fit it into my training plan having most of the week afterwards resting and easy sessions? I'm planning a 20 week um, preparation for the 70.3 with an Olympic distance race at week 12. Um, I would like to fit the event uh, the week before into the plan but would not like to jeopardize my first half distance race. They go on but I think we've got the kind of crux of yeah. the question there. Yeah, I mean, I like the way that you've already, you know, you've got your two major goals and those complement each other. They're nice distance apart. Having the half marathon at the beginning of the season, great. You've got that run base and you can then work on the other sports and bring them in. And also the 20-week plan sounds like everything's spot on, including that sprint distance, uh, however many weeks out. That's going to be great for just practicing everything. But it is, like you've pinpointed, that sprint distance race a week before your 70.3, with a 70.3 being really important to you. But I get that you want to do that local race. And I think we've been in the same situation. We just, you want to turn up you want to go and do a race so this is when you're going to have to be really controlled and make sure you rein it in a bit if you want to do well in the 70.3 and it might be hard for your local event with adrenaline i mean the swim go for it i think you know if that distance swim you're going to be training that hard still at that point anyway so nothing to worry about there but the bike i think you want to back off slightly and if you can do a, a 90 percent i mean i'm I, I just thinking of not going quite as hard as you were, just slightly off mm. off max, which is really hard in a race because if you're racing, you're racing. But it's the run then that you really want to make sure you don't go too hard because that's, that's going to give you the damage in your legs. I don't know how conditioned you are and how much triathlon racing you've done, but it's the running that you'll feel the next day, the next few days when you need to be feeling good and getting those last few bits of quality in. Yeah, and if it's going to make you feel any better, then actually if you're really training for the 70.3 
well, you're probably still going to be doing a fairly meaty and hard session that weekend mm -hmm. before. So doing an Olympic distance triathlon isn't the end of the world. Um, but as Heather says, you just probably don't want to be going all out because that's, you know, between two to three hours of pretty hard racing that is definitely going to affect the following weekend. Yeah. So just back off a slight amount. Yeah, but good luck and then still try and enjoy that local one because I know how important it is to race events you enjoy doing. Uh, now we have one from Terrain Turner says, I'm around four months into an Ironman distance-based training program ahead of starting a specific six-month training plan in a couple of months' time. What, if any, improvements should I be seeing? The big difference I notice is that I can comfortably do the six sessions a week. Other than that, not much. Perhaps a couple of beats per minute less for the same power effort at the zone two end. If anything, my FTP is the same and my run VO2 is dropping. Hmm, interesting. Um, well, great. Obviously, you've seen some improvements initially. Um, perhaps you've kind of caught up with the program and actually mm. it's not pushing you um, as much as it should be. Um, typically with a program, it should always sort of be overloading. You get to sort of three or four weeks in, um, a good well-planned program should then sort of recover, allow sort of fatigue levels to come down and then you push on again. Um, it sounds like you've kind of caught up with it and it's not really overloading you anymore. Um, and for yeah. that reason, you're seeing things dropping off or just not really progressing. Yeah, and I mean, if you're comfortable doing that, that's fine but if you want to really maximize this this opportunity and get ready for that following program then you could look at going back to the start of it but doing everything at a little bit of a higher intensity or adding on some distance to some of the longer bikes the longer runs basically as long as you like mark says you're you're pushing your body in some aspects and then giving it time to adapt it will continue to get stronger and you should continue to see improvements Good stuff. All right, next one from Jeff Glover. It says, how do you organize your gear? There's so much gear, it takes up so much space and hard to get out of the room early in the morning without waking up my wife. Well, you could do what me and Heather do and we get in our swimming suits the night before, don't we? Oh yeah. No, Goggles on the head as well. I mean, those marks are I have done nightmares that to get rid of. I have done it before. I don't We've know why. Story, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, it is a, a challenge, particularly with triathlon. We just have so much gear mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I, I definitely struggle with this one. Um, but I mean, quite simply, just get your gear to ready, get re gear ready the night before. Mm. Place it downstairs in a bag, or if it's in, or maybe in the car, and mm. it may, just makes things so much simpler. Yeah. And quicker I mean, in the if morning. if it's early morning, I do leave clothes laid out that mm. I am actually going to put on. So if I'm driving to a yeah. training session, the training clothes are there, and then the over-the-top clothes are there. So it's like just. You don't have to think and you'll also be quieter if you're not having to open drawers and things and have your water bottles ready you can even have them filled up and yeah just i think in my mind i go through my session in my i go through like getting there getting into the session doing it and like dressing myself and then mm -hmm. the other end so i kind of try to make sure that yeah, i've I, ticked everything off just I, remember your underwear if you do go in your training <laughs> kit though that's all i would say i literally i just have all my <laughs> kit laid on the kitchen table downstairs so as soon as my alarm goes off i switch it straight off and i roll out of bed quietly and then Such a good boyfriend, downstairs. aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. right. Next one then from Michael Gainsford. Um, I was wondering about protein drinks for when you are training. I've signed up for a sprint triathlon and a marathon in the new year. Would protein drinks help a balanced diet? And what or which would you recommend? Thanks in advance, Michael. Hmm. Well, I mean, Michael, you've said would it help a, a balanced diet? But the key there is the balanced diet because if you have a balanced diet, you shouldn't need to be majorly supplementing it. Yes, you're going to be doing more training than it sounds like you normally do. So you'll need to increase the uptake on everything across the board within reason in a balanced form. Now it is recommended that as endurance athletes, you need between one and one and a half grams of protein um, per kilo of body weight so that's a guide and if you start to you know if you really want to look into the the macronutrients you're probably getting close to that from a balanced diet um, if you are not eating dairy or meat then it can be much harder and then maybe you'll need to look at supplementing it more but think of i think when you're generally training a bit more you'll be more hungry so maybe try to think about some of those snacks actually being a little bit heavier in protein so you can snack on nuts or peanut butter or having a yogurt or a milkshake um all of these things that are that are quite nice without having to go specifically down the sort of highly priced on the whole kind of marketed as protein drinks but actually a milkshake is also a protein shake in yeah. a more natural form. Agreed. Uh, I'm going to jump in a slight counter here, not, dis not disagreeing at all, but sure. <laughs> um, only, only from experience. Um, at one point I was training quite hard whilst also working and um, 
despite all of these good intentions, there were times mm. where I just ran out of time, I didn't have mm -hmm. everything with me. And actually it was really handy just to have that pot of protein there ready when I got caught out and I wasn't quite ready. And it did mean that rather than, you know, going under fueled or not recovering yeah, the properly. Convenience. I, but I wasn't relying on it day to day as like yeah. my go to in between every single session. So I think it's really important, as you said, it's, you know, uh, ideally we're just looking for a balanced mm. diet and you should find as much as you can through that anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. I agree. All right. Well, thanks very much again for all the questions. Um, as always, keep them coming in using that hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. Um, thanks again for watching. Give it a thumbs up.